Hi, um, I'd like to th thank Dr. Glide and my advisor. Today I'm going to talk about external fixation uh, technique for delayed intermedullary nailing of the tibia. Uh, just a little background information. External fixation has been used um, as temporary stabilization for open and uh, unstable tibial fractures. Um, there are multiple configurations, your unilateral, I'm sorry, uniplanar, biplanar, et cetera. The advantages is that it maintains length and alignment, um, gives you access to the soft tissue. It's minimally invasive, um, preserving the blood supply that's there, and it can be rapidly applied in patients, um, especially when they're unstable. Um, in general, uh, external fixers have been removed uh, prior to nailing because the uh, pins transverse the intermedullary canal, and this results in loss of uh, reduction. Therefore, during the case, the tibia has to be uh, manually manipulated and um, held in reduction for the spin of uh, fixation. What I present today is, is a unique external fixator configuration that uh, provides relative stability and um, achieves the goals of a uh, standard external fixator. The uh, distinctive characteristic about this configuration is that it allows you to maintain the external fixator with, while performing the intermedullary nailing. So there are three pins and two bars that are needed for this configuration. The first one is the proximal medial pin. And as you can see from the top um, for us here, it's uh, located in the posterior third of the uh, proximal tibia, um, about two centimeters distal to the uh, joint line to avoid penetration of the, joint, of the uh, knee capsule and it's placed from a medial to lateral um, direction parallel to the uh, tibial plateau. The second pin is the anterior pin, and that's located on the anterior lateral aspect of the tib proximal tibia, and that's placed um, either uh, just proximal or distal to your first pin, again avoiding the joint capsule, and it's placed from anterior posterior direction. Then the third pin is the distal medial pin, and that's placed in the anterior third of the distal tibia, just above the physial scar, uh, again, uh, from medial to lateral, just uh, parallel to the uh, plafond. So uh, once that's, those pins are in place, you put one clamp on each of the proximal pin and two clamps on the distal pin, and then the bars are placed in this V-shaped configuration and it, looking at this clinical picture, it gives you access to our, the soft tissue as a, your standard external fixer. And uh, the reduction is performed and the clamps are tightened into place. And this is just a uh, final of uh, one of our patients with the external fixator. So once you're ready to do the nailing, um, these, uh, here we have the RR going in and it's lateral to our anterior pin and just anterior to our proximal medial pin. And then we have the ball tip guy wire following the uh, all into the medullary canal again, avoiding our two um, pins. And then distally, the ball tip guy wire is posterior to the um, distal uh, shans pin. And uh, here we have our nail um, over the guy wire, again, avoiding the two proximal pin. And then distally, our uh, rod is posterior to the shans pin. And this is a clinical picture, interoperative picture of the uh, nailing um, with our external fixator in place. And then our final. So in conclusion, this V-shaped configuration is a relatively uh, stable construct and achieves the uh, goals of a, a standard external fixator. The uh, strategic placement of the pins allow us to uh, place the intermedullary nail without having to remove the external fixator. The fixator can be manip manipulated interoperatively to maintain your um, reduction with min minimal manual labor. So. Uh, our, this external fixator configuration is an ar is an addition to our armament of uh, tr temporary treatment of open or unstable tibial fractures. Thank you.